Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Entropen and today I'm bringing you Spellbinder's small die of the month, July 2024, skating into the holidays. I do end up making eight cards with this beautiful set, but you don't have to use the skating boots for all of the cards. I end up doing quite a few embossing folder techniques. I use the 2D embossing folder, Hexy Snowflake, and I do show quite a few techniques. As usual, I die cut all of the dies in white card, except for the skate as well as the base of the boot where you can see a silver die cut as well as a black die cut. And some of those dies I've dub doubled in my die cutting and I've got two die cuts. So for example, there's one double for the boot, but I've got two sets of it. Same with the skates as well as the heel of the boot and the shoelace and all of that. So some of the dies I've doubled it because I want to put a pair of skating boots on the card front. I did that for the foliage as well as well as the flowers. I just put extras because when I put my card composition together, I'm not sure how many I will need. And having all of these die cuts in white is just that much easier. So then I can put it onto my sticky mat and start doing some ink blending with distress inks. I prefer doing it this way because then I can do some combination of colors rather than take out all of the pattern paper and I may not have the exact color of pattern paper or colored card that I need. And what I like is about this is with inks, you can combine the inks and get the colors you want. I use distress inks for all of this because I've got quite a lot of distress inks and you putting it onto the sticky mat, especially when the die cuts are quite small, it just makes the job that much easier. I mean, I use my stamp wheels, but there are quite a few sticky mats in the market and you can use any of those. I like the fact that it is a kind of set that you can use with the skating boots because obviously it's part of the set and you can have an explosion of foliage and flower come out of that set or you can put it on its own. And that's what I did. I made three cards with the skating boots and I end up doing quite a few of the embossing folder techniques, as I mentioned. I do the embossing folder techniques on the deboss side as well as the emboss side. I do enjoy embossing folder techniques. I end up using the Hexy Snowflake as a background for all eight cards. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. And when you do subscribe, remember to press that notification bell so you're alerted when new videos are uploaded. I do lots of Spellbinders Club Kids video tutorials as well as from their core collection releases on a monthly basis. All of the products I've used are listed in the description below for your ease of reference. I have indicated all of the colors I've used on the screen so I don't list all of them in the description below if not it gets too long. But all of them I tend to use distress inks but for the embossing folder techniques I do use different inks like pigment, metallic pigment inks as well as white pigment ink. I continue to ink all of the individual die cuts. There's quite a few of them. So when you get started, you want to think of the colors in advance. And I think that thinking of the color combinations is sometimes the hardest bit of putting the card together. For me anyway, there's quite a few of these dies and die cuts and sometimes it can be quite intimidating but don't let that put you off because what you want to do is start getting on with it. And it's one of those die sets that once you start doing it, it's easy to put together because there are etches on those die cuts that facilitates easy assembly of each of the components. So what you need to do when you do your die cuts is group them together. So I've got all the individual elements to put this board together, put that together, put all the elements to do the skating boots together, all the elements to do each of the flowers together and that's how you can break it down and start pulling your card together by assembling the individual parts and then putting it all together to for doing the card front and the great thing is all that foliage and flowers can be used separately on any card if you want a simple card which say just the embossing folder background and the wax seal you just put a little bit of foliage and flowers and that's you done and all you need to do is think of the color combination. So I'm putting the skating boot together here. It's rather simple to do. You just put the base together, start with the base, and then you're putting the second part on. So it's nice and flush against that base. So you, you know it's going to all fit together. So sometimes you think, how am I going to put it together? Well, actually, it all makes sense when you start putting it together. And the lace, the uh, bow, the shoelace, 
you just i left the shoelace in the die cut because sometimes when the die cut is quite intricate and thin you might yourself leave it in what you've die cut ink it and then remove it or you could ink some white card and then die cut it either way it's fine so this shoelace is so well done that it fits perfectly onto the skating boot not much fuss to do and it just looks like it's just custom made honestly it's so easy to put together when you get started i've had many questions on the white card i use to do my die cutting and ink blending now i either use the nina sola white 110 pound card or 80 pound card depending on what element i am die cutting if it's a larger element i tend to sometimes use the 110 pound card or i use a 300 gsm pure white card that i purchase from a craft company in the uk i've got the links to all of this in the description below but i would suggest using a card a white card that is easily attainable wherever you live I find the card from the UK craft company nice and easy and affordable as well. You can also decide that you want to use a combination of it. So for the boot, I'm actually using a, a shiny white card. It's slightly half white, but I wanted to have shiny skating boots. That's what I'm using for the boots. So I didn't color the boot. It is a, a card that I already have. So it's slightly shiny off white card. I'm assembling the flowers together as you can see later on once i've put the card together and assembled the card i put some glossy accents on it just to give it a bit of shine now i'm assembling the skate on the boot there is actress on the skate to show exactly where you can put your glue and attach the bottom of the boot to it so easy enough to do you just need to follow the etches on almost all of the die cuts as a guide as to where you should put this for the poinsettia, I decide to do a double layer here. So I've got one a slightly darker red and one a slightly lighter red at the top. And I put the middle that comes with that same poinsettia dye. I later on put gems on it because I didn't want it just to be green. Now that I've done all of my die cutting and my ink blending and my assembly, I'm going to get ready for the background of the card. This is my first embossing folder technique where I put a couple of colors, distress inks, the broken china as well as speckled egg just in the corner of the panel. This is an A6 panel. Then I'm going to be spritzing it with some water at the back, not where I inked it, but at the back, so I can soften the fibers and prevent cracking. And I'm looking at the debossed image. I wanted the debossed image for the first background of the card. I always like to deboss or emboss my uh, card panel slightly bigger than the card front so it's easy to attach the card front and just cut off the balance. And then you've got an embossed panel that is flush on the card front. I attached the two skating boots together because I wanted it to overlap. And then I just put some cellophane tape at the back and then I put some liquid glue just to make sure it sticks well together. Because the skating boots are overlapping, there'll be a difference in depth of card. So I put two different sizes of dimensional foam tape at the back. You've got the two millimeter on the right and the one millimeter so it's nice and flush on the card front again for this queen set here i put some foam tape as well because it's going to overlap on the boot and the other bit is going to be on the card front itself so it's nice and flush on top on the card front and i like to do that with all of the dies that i attach to this composition on the card front i just think it's nice and colorful and i wanted the card background to match the boot laces and i do a similar combination um, of this uh, card but in pink i use pink laces i've got two christmas cards that i want to give uh, my niece and my nephew and i thought it would be nice to have a pink and a blue i think it's cute i attach all of the die cuts with either liquid glue or some foam tape just to give it a bit of a height but generally it's just about slotting it in what you could do is always and that's why i like to have different varied colors of the foliage so you can differentiate between that foliage types and it doesn't look all uniform and then i finally attach the uh, three pink flowers at the end because i didn't want them all clustered together so i like to put it in odd numbers and i just put them all together for the sentiment i use the uh, sentiments from the clear stamp of the month and die as well and i put all of the cards i use a sentiment from that set 
So it's uh, the clear stamp and die of the month, July 2024. And it's got some amazing Christmas uh, sentiments. It's called the Christmas Magic Sentiments. And you've got a larger curvy or cursive um, sentiment as well as some script sentiments. And you've got coordinating die cuts for all of them. Nice and easy to use. So I really enjoyed using this set. And I continue using this sentiment set for almost all the other Spellbinders Club kits. The, the Spellbinders Club kits of Glimmer of the Month comes with a sentiment of its own. So if you watch that video, which is in my YouTube channel, you can also see that I use a different sentiment there. But generally, this sentiment from the clear stamp of the month is so, so versatile that I use it for all the cards that I show you in this video today. I'm just stamping it onto a black card. So I always treat the black card with anti-static powder, uh, stamp some clear embossing ink. And I like to make sure that my stamps are, uh, if, especially if they're new, you can either use a stamp conditioning eraser or just rub it with your thumb so you remove the sheen and therefore it can accept the ink that goes onto the stamp. Sprinkle it with some super fine white embossing powder Remove any stray embossing powder with a dry paintbrush so you get a nice and crisp image when you heat emboss it. And then I melt the embossing powder with a heat tool. And I use my WOW heat tool, which comes with two settings. And always use the second setting when you're melting embossing powder. I use the coordinating dies to die cut the sentiment. And I always die cut extra because I want a bit of dimension, especially if you've got the coordinating dies, why not? So I die cut extra for the joy to you and yours. And I like combining curvy, uh, bold sentiments with script sentiments. I just think it looks good. And I tend to do that in quite a few of the cards that I showed today. And I just put a, a strip, a foam strip behind the script sentiment. And there you go, the card's done. Later on, I do add glossy accents to a, quite a few of the flowers and some gems as well to finish the card. But this is the first card that I've completed with a debossed background. Now I'm doing the same card, a similar card to what I've done earlier. But as I said, this has got a pink background. But instead of using the debossed image, I'm going to use the embossed image for this background and use pink shoelaces for the skating boots. But the rest of the card is pretty much the same. I just want, as mentioned, I wanted to make a pink card and a blue card, Christmas themed card using the skating boots. And I think it looks really cute. So I'm using the Distress Inks here, Worn Lipstick and Spun Sugar. Again, slightly darker and lighter color combination for the card panel that will be embossed. The usual, I spritz some water. Now, if there's too much water you spritz and your card is warped, after you do your embossing, leave it under some heavy items and leave it to dry there so it'll dry nice and straight and you won't have a warped embossed card. I'm going to give it a little bit of a border on the card front here. So I'm just going to cut it with my guillotine. You can have either F your card front embossed panel flush against the card front, but I decided to do something different here and give it a bit of a frame. I put some foam sheet at the back to give it a bit of dimension, attached it onto the card front, and that's me attaching just a simple sentiment noel i think it's really pretty it's a very similar to the other one in fact pretty much the same colors i've used other than the background and the shoelace and i love how this turned out i'm going to add gems to it later on now this is another embossing technique where i'm going to use the deboss side of the image all of the card where i do my ink blending here i use the strathmore bristol smooth card and it's listed in the description below because I think it not only in blends beautifully, but it also embosses and debosses really well. Keep in mind the theme of the embossing folder, which is snowflakes. I'm going with cool tones here using teals and a blue here just to ensure it goes with the theme of the embossing folder. So the thing about use, doing ink blending is you've got three components. You need to use the right cardstock, which is the Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock. Make sure you use domed foams, which makes ink blending so much easier and ensure that your ink packs are nice and juicy. So you've got a lovely combination here with salvage patina, peacock feathers, as well as price ribbon. I liked how it turned out. And now I'm going to use the debossed side. So remember, some light spritz of water to soften the card fibers. Put it facing away and you're going to get the deboss side. Use the right sandwich for your embossing machine. Put a heavy object on it and let it dry so it makes it so much easier when it dries straight for this technique. 
So it looks pretty on its own, but I decide to use the VersaFine Clear Medieval Blue ink pad and just lightly rub it so all the flat bits get covered with this darker blue and you see the ink blending come through from those impressed bits of the image. I think it's so pretty. I do th I've done this quite a few times and I like the results every time. Now I'm going to do some wax melting. So I'm going to use the pearl white wax beads. This came with my wax seal of the month, which is a joyful snowflake. So it goes with the theme of the Spellbinders Cup Kids for July 2024, which is very much Christmas themed, winter themed. And while it's melting, and I'm notice I'm melting it in my non-stick wax seal spoon, which makes cleanup so, so easy. When I pour out the welted max onto the non-stick mat, I try to do it in a circular fashion as much as I can. Generally, it takes a little bit of practice to get it as circle as you want or as oval or whatever shape you want. It, it takes a little bit of practice. But remember, if you get it wrong, you can just cut up that wax and then melt it again. I do that all the time. And I try to do it with slightly different combinations by adding some teal, some light blue, just to get a slight variation of the snowflake wax. And it just, it's really pretty. I like all the combinations. So here I've put the pearl white with a little bit of teal, and I think it's pretty as well. And I use various metallic markers to highlight the snowflake image so it kind of sticks out and it's more prominent when you put the wax seal there. So this one, I end up putting some silver marker on it, metallic silver marker on it. And then I also use the gold metallic marker and also use a blue Sharpie to bring out the image of the snowflake. So you can use whatever markers just to make sure you bring out the image of the snowflake. So there's a slight blue tinge to this wax seal. And I do one later with a little bit more blue, like this one here. So I'm using my Sharpie to ink or to highlight the snowflake image on the wax seal. It takes a few rounds for it to stick, but in the end it does stick. So it takes a little bit of patience because the pearl white is slightly non-porous and therefore it takes me a little while to get the color onto the wax seal. So the next one that I'm doing here, it's got more light blue in it. So I wanted the light blue and the white to mix to have more of a snowflake look. That's how it's, I see it in my mind. So I'm going to be using here the gold metallic marker. And again, easy enough to make it highlight and show the snowflake off quite easily against the pearl white. And with the non-stick wax seal spoon, it's so easy to remove the balance and keep it again into your storage box for reuse at a later. So you can melt it again and use it, no issues at all. Now I'm going to do assembly of this card panel. I'm just wrapping the card panel with some metallic thread just to give it a little bit of a base in where I'm going to place all that foliage from the small die of the month, place the wax seal, and then the sentiment is going to come from clear stamp of the month. That's the thing I like about Spellbinders Club Kits. All of them gel or complement each other so well that you can use all of them in combination to create an amazing card of the theme of that month. So you can get your subscription anytime between the 6th and 27th of each month. So you're going to get them delivered to you and you can start creating. And I hope all these cards are a great inspiration to you when you get your club kids to start creating. Once I've twined the metallic thread around the debossed card panel, secured it with cello tape, backed it with some foam sheet, I'm going to attach it to the card front. This is an A6 card front, which is A6 cards measure 10 and a half centimeters by 14.8 centimeters. It's quite a common card size in the UK and I tend to use it a lot instead of A2 cards. So I'm going to arrange the foliage around the wax seal. Initially, I was going to put the poinsettia and I decided not to use it in the end. I used the wax seal stem adhesive circle to the back of the wax seal and then I start attaching all of the foliage from the small die of the month and I've got a combination of them in white as well as glitter silver card. I think the silver goes well against a cool tone background like with teals and blues. I start with the wax seal with silver in it but I do end up changing the wax seal later on but then again that's the way I am. Once I finish the card I think it looks better with something else and I make the change. So I'm just using random foliage here and I'll attach the wax seal and I've got the sentiment from clear stamp of the month. 
I hope all of this is inspiration. I'd love to hear from you what you think of my uh, card assembly, die cutting, ink blending, as well as my embossing techniques. Embossing folder techniques is something I really enjoy doing and I like trying different color combinations, different techniques. I'm not saying all of these are my own techniques. I've learned so much by looking at other amazing crafters and I tend to try my take on it. And this is the card, really simple. And I end up changing it because I think it the blue uh, wax seal goes better than the silver wax seal. I think it stands out a bit more. And that's about me. Once I finished a card, I realized, oh, I like this a blue uh, snowflake better. And I change it. And that's the thing about crafting. You can change it and make it to what you want until you're happy with how the assembly and the composition looks in the card front. The next card that I'm going to do is another background of embossing folder. So here I'm just going to be embossing a clear white card and then I'm going to use the Alternus Enchanted Gold Pigment Ink to create a really light wash. I start off doing it light but then I end up having uh, swiping it onto the embossed side of the card panel quite a few times. You need a bit of patience because you don't want to press too much because you only want to hit the raised parts of the embossed image. So if you press too much, it might get into the other bits as well. So you need to be patient. I'm doing the same thing here where I emboss the image onto red card and I'm using white pigment ink. Again, I'm doing it very lightly. I just refill, put a refill onto my white pigment ink. That's why it's so juicy. But I do leave this to dry for a couple of hours for the next step because I'm going to sprinkle it with some super fine white embossing powder because the pigment ink takes a long time to dry. So after a couple hours, it's still ready, but it's only the raised part, which has got the bulk of the ink that's going to capture the embossing powder. If you put the embossing powder immediately, it's going to go all over the place and get quite messy. And because it's a large area, make sure your heat tool is preheated. Start from the back of the panel and patiently do the rest of it. It's going to be slightly warped, not a problem. Just move it along and when you attach it, make sure you put some foam sheet behind for dimension as well as to keep it straight. Now for the next technique, I'm going to attach the panel with some Best Ever Craft Tape to the side of the embossing folder. So I'm going to be using the deboss side. I'm placing ink on the bit that is flat and putting it through the embossing machine. And I do this a few times because it's a very light color that I'm using. So you can see that the debossed parts or rather the background is being colored. So the embossed image is remaining white. After you do it a few times, it looks really, really pretty. I also end up lightly tapping the image with a pick white pigment ink and putting it some embossing powder on it. So the green background has got white embossing powder on the raised snowflake image as the red background. It just this various combination and techniques. I just enjoy it. I like using embossing folders and I use all of it in the cards that I assemble. Here you go. I have two cards here that I've assembled with the backgrounds that I've shown. I didn't show the assembly of it because it's pretty straightforward. But to me, the background technique is what I want to show here. This card is a very simple assembly of the skating boots. I've just done some ink blending with a couple of different distress inks, debossed the image, and I'm going to be attaching red skating boots with silver glitter card silver for the skates as well. I just got a couple of strips just to hang the boots and I'm going to put a bow at the top. I just thought I'd do a very simple version of a card without all that foliage, without all the extras, but just the boots, bow and a sentiment. So you can make this card as busy or as simple as you want and you still can end up with such a lovely card. And that's the beauty of these die sets. They give you so many options that you can do it in different combinations and end up with a beautiful card. So here I end up using the small die of the month, which is the boots and the bow. The background is the embossing folder of the month and the sentiment is from the clear stamp of the month. This is an il illustration as with the other cards on how all the different club kits of the month complement each other so well because they are based on the same theme and you can use them together to create some amazing cards. As usual, I put a combination of double-sided tape 
and a dimensional foam tape to make sure that die cut sits quite flush on the card front and then I just add the sentiment. Simple and beautiful. And I'll of course attach it to the front of an A7 card. Now it's not an A7 card but it's a slightly cut down version of an A7 card. A7 cards are usually 5 inches by 7 inches but I've cut it down slightly so this is 5 inches by 6 and a 3 quarter inches. So I can still use an A7 envelope for it. it it's just meeting what I need to make a slightly different sized card. I like the fact that I'll be versatile in my card sizes and still achieve some amazing cards. After debossing the card panel, I did go over with some interest ink just at the bottom of the card panel to give it a slightly darker hue at the bottom. Now for all the completed cards, I've done eight cards all together and I've got a combination of debossed backgrounds and embossed backgrounds and I've tried many different embossing folder techniques and I've done cards with and without the skating boots just with the foliage. I've used wax seal. I really hope you enjoyed seeing how I used all the different products together within the club kits to create some amazing Christmas cards or winter themed cards that I'm going to be keeping for my stash this year. I did add glossy accents to most of the foliage and flowers as well as flower centers. Once I've completed the cards when I was adding the gems, I really hope you enjoyed all the inspiration. When you get your club kits, you'll give it a go. I do combine all of the video tutorials I do for each of the Spellbinders club kits into a playlist and I will put that playlist up at the end of all the videos that I release for this month's Spellbinders club kits so it's easier to have all of the cards in one place. All of the products I've used is listed in the description below for your ease of reference and if you follow on in this video now you'll see close-up pictures of all these eight cards that I've created so you can see the detail of how I put the foliage together as well as the backgrounds, the debossed background, the embossed background and I would love to hear from you on which techniques you enjoyed, which techniques you'd like to see more of and I'd love to do more videos on that. Thank you so much for stopping by happy crafting and I do hope when your club kits arrive you will have so much fun trying out the various techniques and inspirations that you found not in just my channel but as well as in the various talented artists out there. Happy crafting, take care, catch you at my next video.